Hi, it's Greg Gornert, Vice President and Senior Investment Advisor at Canico Genuity Wealth Management and Gornert Wealth Management. Now, we're here to help you make some sense of your financial lives. Now, over the past little bit, the gold and silver markets have been getting a lot of attention. And joining us today is Canico Genuity Gold Analyst, Kerry McCurry. Welcome, Kerry. How are you? I'm great, Greg. Thanks for, thanks for having me. No, I really appreciate uh, you taking some time. Now, you publish our daily gold update and uh, you know, really get a, a good macro view of what's happening in, in the gold sector for us. Can you walk through a couple of themes that you seem to be following right now and you're noticing in the markets? Yeah, so I mean, clearly, you know, gold's been in a, in a pretty good market for quite some time. Um, you know, we would say we've sort of been in a bull market since early, or so, sorry, since late 2015. Um, clearly this year with COVID and, you know, monetary central bank policy being zero and back to QE and interest rates back to zero and negative real interest rates. That's really put a bid in the gold price. And, you know, we set all time highs this past year of over $2,000 an ounce, taking out the, the previous high in 2011. Yeah. Now, you know, going forward, do you see any kind of corrections uh, coming in the marketplace? I, I know that the miners themselves have had a good run, but maybe not as, as strong a run as the, uh, uh, as the underlying commodities had for the past little bit. Do you think there's going to be a catch up there or do you think that there's just a consolidation wave that's happening right now? I think we'll see a catch up there. I think if you go back to last year, you know, the gold stocks were very strong sort of from March through to August when, you know, gold was setting all time highs. I think we've been through a period of consolidation since. And if you go back to November, sort of when the vaccines first came on the scene, you know, I remember remember the day November the 9th gold was down a hundred dollars an ounce that was when the original Pfizer announcement came so you know there's really two reasons people own gold one is you know obviously the fear of trade you know there's you know thinking that the pandemic you know buy gold as a sort of safe haven against the market and then yeah. you know the other angle investors look at is more of the inflation trade so I think you know a central bank policy and fiscal policy you know came in pretty quickly in March gold had done well gold stocks had done well but as we've gone through this vaccine um sort of you know not only just being announced but actually rolling out now mm -hmm. you know there is a segment of investors that you know why do i need own gold i'll sell my gold and buy you know the s p 500 or, or generally stocks that are poised for a rebound but we think you know we are in a correction phase we think we'll get through that um ultimately the central banks have committed to zero percent interest rates for years we've got qe happening for years we don't think, you know, we think real rates are going to be low for quite some time. So I think we're working through this. The stocks have sold off quite a bit. They're actually relatively cheap now versus where gold is. And we think it's just a matter of time before, you know, we think the next big move is up. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you're right there. Now, uh, we had some excitement in, uh, in the silver market last week. Uh, now, do you want to talk a little bit? There was a whole Wall Street bets crowd and, and there was the potential move on, on silver side. Do you want to walk us through, you know, how, how you see that playing out or how that did play out? Because it, it fizzled, you know, as expected rather quickly there. It, it fizzled quickly. I mean, you know, obviously if you get a million people sort of acting as a herd, it can move prices pretty quickly. The silver market relative to gold is a relatively smaller market and, you know, prices can move pretty quickly. But I think it, as we've even seen with GameStop, I mean, there was a dramatic run up and that's already down pretty dramatically. So, you know, I don't think there's going to be fundamental support for the market via, you know, Reddit per se. I think they'll yeah, move on no. to other things. And and the reality is, I think, you know, shorting a single company is a lot easier than shorting a global commodity. Yeah, no, that, that, and, and that's a that's a good point, too. I, I think they might have misunderstood the size of the market as a whole. And, and uh, in, in my opinion, uh, the ones that they, the individual stocks, when they looked at, you know, GameStop and, you know, AMC or BlackBerry, you know, those stocks, in my opinion, were, were deservedly, you know, uh, going out of business or, you know, perhaps or going somewhere close to it. And those were kind of natural, you know, uh, shorts to begin with. So there, there was a lot of, uh, I would think, downside on, on those, whereas, uh, you know, silver is a little bit of a different marketplace. Now, we talked a little bit about gold. We talked a little bit about where you see things. Like, do you, does the U.S. dollar rate kind of play in your mind as, as far as that flight to safety? Because, you know, usually uh, when there is a flight to safety, everyone goes to the U.S. dollar and, and it being gold um, denominated in, in U.S. dollars, sometimes you can see it sell off there just in, in relative terms. Yeah, no, the dollar is definitely worth watching. At the end of the day, you know, we view gold as a currency and, you know, the natural counterparty to the, to the gold price is the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen the U.S. dollar, obviously it's been strong in the last couple of weeks, but generally it has been moving down. I think if you look at, again, Fed policy, 
of being at zero and still doing QE, you know, global monetary policy is going to be easy for some time. It's not unlike sort of 2008, 2009, we had the 2008 crisis. Um, you know, again, we had macro monetary policy going to zero and, and QE happening. We had massive fiscal policy. And if you look at 2009, you know, the S&P 500 bottomed in March it went up for the rest of the year, but gold also went up, gold stocks went up. So there was this sort of global reflation trade and, you know, the dollar basically backed off as being a safe haven. So I think we're probably entering a similar period here where we've got this sort of commitment to inflation, which we think ultimately is going to be good for gold. I mean, if you've heard the Fed talk, you know, not only do they want to get to 2%, they want to get through 2% sustainably. There's even yeah. someone on the Fed talking about 3% inflation. The US, hadn't, the US hasn't had 3% inflation in 30 years. So I think as inflation starts to gain hold there, I think that's going to be, you know, weak for the dollar and good for commodities. Including yeah, no, gold. I, I agree. Now, any thoughts on, you know, traditionally, this has been a, a boom and bust industry where there tends to be a tremendous amount of overinvestment. And then there tends to be a tremendous amount of, of underinvestment. I, you know, looking at the marketplace right now, I, I see the gold miners entering this stage in a much better situation than they were in 2008, you know, 2009. From a leverage point of view, they, um, they are in good you know, good position from my point of view. Uh, I guess the next look at it would be, you know, M and A activity. Do you expect to see that that pick up? Because a lot of companies, you know, haven't been, uh, you know, developing uh, projects for the past number of years, and they've got to replace what they're taking out of the ground every year. Well, I think on your first point, I think, you know, in some ways, the industry has never been better run. I mean, you're right. If you look, that's at, a really good point. Yeah. If you look at the industry today, I mean. On, on our numbers, the industry will have net cash by the end of this year. If you go back to 2008, 2009, 2010, the industry had you know 20 billion of debt on the balance sheet. I know. Yeah, We're looking at exactly. a net net cash position. The company's costs are lower today than they were. So at this gold price, these guys are making record margins. So not only are they making record margins, record free cash flow, but the other point that you you highlighted is companies aren't building anything. There's very you know capex spending compared to where it was in 2010, 2011 is massively lower. So, and and I think companies learned you know the hard lesson in the last cycle that if you over overbuild you know bad things happen so companies today are keeping a better balance sheet keeping free cash flow returning capital shareholders you know so i think arguably it's in a much better situation today than it was and, and on the m a front if you recall 20 2008 2009 2010 big premiums were being paid guys were bidding over assets today you know, zero premium deals, low premium deals are the deals that we're seeing. And it's largely producers buying producers as opposed to producers buying greenfield projects and putting billions of dollars into the ground. So a lot more discipline in the space. We'll see how that evolves, but certainly that's the case today. Yeah, well, definitely the case today. We'll see if that um, that uh, stays that way over the next five years, but that's a problem in the, in the years to come. Uh, but yeah, the, your, your point is well made that, uh, you know, from the outside, looking in from, from my point of view, the the, uh, the miners are in much better shape right now. And, and I mean, they're almost being run like real businesses when you need to buy <laughs> something. <laughs> no, I think that's a true statement. But when you think about gold, you know, gold was tied to the US dollar up until 1971. So as a business, as an industry, it's actually a pretty young industry. It's only been around for 50 years. And if you look at most companies yeah. today, not too many companies even predate 2000 that are companies that exist today. So I think there was a lot of euphoria, you know, gold was in a bear market for most of the 80s, most of the 90s. And then all of a sudden the 2000s came and gold went up, you know, 6x, 7x. And there was a lot of clearly euphoria, not just within money companies, but among investors. So it was all about growth and all about acquiring more assets. But I think, again, I think companies have learned the lesson the next cycle. Again, I think companies are going to keep an eye on the balance sheet a lot more than they did, did in the past. I think big premium m and is, is definitely a long ways away. And you know, multi-billion dollar projects certainly aren't on anyone's books in the near term. No, that's great. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining and sharing your thoughts today. Please come back and join us again. Kerry McCurry. Thanks very much, Kerry. Great. Thank you.